question I think is an intimate and personal question, especially for this area. And I'm going to read it verbatim again. Uh, it's another long question, but it, it's going to give you some context that I think will be helpful. This form is being held in Sun City Anthem, developed by Pulte. One of the boundaries of Pulte's property lies 400 yards from the injection site of a pro proposed in, is it in situ? In situ copper mine, a mine which the majority of people of Florence oppose. The Florence Town Council opposes this mine because the in situ uh, process of mining requires the injection of millions of pounds of sulfuric acid into the ground, subjecting the aquifer which supplies the drinking water to possible contamination. Will you sign or veto any legislation which benefits the, this in situ mine, copper mine, testing or commercial operation? And I'll start with Alex, please. Um, I wonder about, I, as, as our world gets crowded, and, and I really, and, and if you read the Constitution, it says nature's law. What supports life? So a mine is going to support industry. Do we want to support um, the, their, their account books, their ledgers? Do we want millionaires to have more millions? Or would we want that money to, 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 to be, life needs to be more simpler, we're all in trouble. There's water problems in India, there's water problems in Africa, there's environmental problems, Envir and, and, I, and, and when I question, I've seen so much material removed by highway contractors in the past year that we could have probably paid these highway contractors three times for all the materials that have been removed from the state of Arizona. And they say they want mine, mine in and they want some place to put their sulfuric acid. Where does the sulfuric acid come from? Is it some waste from some other project that they have? What does it have to do with our living? I said we could put solar and wind power on every household and we don't need another power plant. Then we'll be self-sufficient. We won't be living a risky life. We won't be paying huge APS bills for all the work that they have done without state oversight in the state of Arizona our bills doubled in December it was appalling APS is a delivery service and now they're in the rental service they have charged us too much they're, they're just mining do we need it do we need another acre of our land carbon monoxide carbon dioxide is, is only released through vegetation we have to, in, Libya broke out in war during the fire in Aspen. Aspen was burning so much of our oxygen on the planet, we were having problems. Thank you. Um, I know there are many homeowners here uh, from this particular community that are concerned about the uh, in situ uh, process for copper mining to the south of here. I personally have done the tour of the facility. Uh, those in the room that haven't, I would encourage you to do that. I personally believe that it's a safe process, but I, I realize public opinion is strong against it, and uh, I believe that uh, homeowners who are concerned about the uh, value of their homes, if, if you honestly, truly believe that this is going to adversely affect you and your community, then you should have a right to, to oppose it. Having said that, I'm the biggest proponent I know of, of copper mining in Arizona. I want to open up the Rosemont mine south of uh, Tucson. I want to expand uh, mining throughout the state, not just copper, but potash and uranium. These are God-given assets that we have received in our state and I think we should exploit them to the fullest. They will gainfully employ people. The mining industry, one company alone, Freeport McMoran's got over a thousand jobs that they cannot fill in Arizona. These are jobs as they say, the best social program known to man is a private sector job. It beats, and, and including these jobs at this uh, mining operation to the south of here, uh, it beats uh, the free stuff of the Obama administration, food stamps, etc.
To your specific question, would I sign or veto? I'm actually not sure yet, because of all of the subject matters that I have talked to people about around the state, the Florence Coppermine must be one of the most divisive. And it depends on who you talk to, whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. So for example, the home developer that wants to put this thing in assures me, this is bad, bad news. If you pump this sulfuric acid into this thing, it is going to contaminate the groundwater and it's going to flow right down through the city of Florence, which is the natural place where housing growth should go for Arizona. On the other hand, if you talk to the copper mining people, they'll say, no, 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 Christine. You pump this sulfuric acid in, it's below the water table. Never in the history of mining has any sulfuric acid mine ever contaminated groundwater. This is fine. This suggests to me politics as usual, okay? One of the beauties of coming to this race without ever having been in office before is I have no strings attached. I can hear all the voices. What I will assure you is I don't know the answer to this today because I'm not sure I've gotten a straight answer on the truth of this copper mine. But what I will do is hear you and hear all of the voices and make a logical, informed decision that is the best decision for this state. Because if you can come to this and you can apply untethered ideas, you can acknowledge things for what they are. Statewide challenges that require cooperation and leadership to fix. That is my commitment to you. As I stand here today, I don't know the answer. I'm not a politician. I can therefore tell you the truth. That's the answer. And that's as much as I got, and I didn't use all my two minutes. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running for governor is to stand up for the Tenth Amendment and to protect Arizona's sovereign state rights. And that's because government works best that governs least and as close to the people as possible. Land use and zoning decisions, like the one regarding the mine, in my opinion, should be made by local government. The people that might disagree with the ultimate decision have recourse to the courts. But I hasten to add, I'm not sure that you want to put that issue in the state legislature, because before we would have an opportunity to consider the bill on its merits as governor, you'd have to go through the legislative process, beginning with committee hearings, and be voted on by 90 duly elected representatives of the people in the state legislature, three of whom actually represent the geographic area where we, where we are today. The other thing I want to add is that I am incredibly concerned about the war on the West. I'm incredibly concerned about the overreach of the federal government, especially this administration, and their assault on private property rights, and the fact that they have put our federal lands, not park lands, but federal lands, off limits from any productive use, any resource use, and they have made it virtually impossible to conduct our traditional industries of ranching, farming, mining, logging on those public lands that belong to all of us, the people. This is a battle I fought as a member of Congress every single year to get funding so we could build roads on the federal forest lands, so that we could selectively harvest those lands for the health of the forest and to reduce the danger of wildfires. So I will stand up for Arizona's 10th Amendment rights, our state sovereignty. I will insist that public lands be used for productive purposes, and I will always, always defend private property rights. A, a UC administration will be pro-mining, pro-free enterprise, and pro-growth. But there's something that, become, that comes before all of those things, and that's the safety of the citizens, and that's the protection of your property rights. If this mine shows to harm your water supply, to hurt your aquifers, then I'll do everything in my power to stop it. But everywhere else in the state where we can get our economy going again, where we can get up at full strength and full steam, I want to get our mining industry moving again. It's a governor's job to first know their priorities and know what, what principles they'll look to. But the protection and safety of the people of Arizona and the protection of property rights are something that will be very important in a Ducey administration and something that you can count on. And that's not just for Maricopa County. That's, I'm saying this to the citizens of Pinal County and all 15 counties. Thank you. What I found as mayor is this is what you learn at the local level is that there's never a black and white issue. It's always about balancing rights. The other issue you have is the economic development of rural Arizona. We hear a lot as we go around the state. What do we do in rural Arizona to create jobs, to create a future for our children? Well, the 
first thing you, you can't do is you can't automatically block out economic opportunity. One that will bring billions of dollars of economic opportunity. So what I've learned in this issue is there are no clear-cut answers, but there are some very clear values and principles. I believe in mining, for example, that if there is economic opportunity, your property rights, you have the responsibility to ensure that you create no damage to your neighbor. And until that can be assured beyond the shadow of the doubt, then no, you shouldn't move forward. I also know that if you're a neighbor, you should allow your neighbor to do what they can do as long as they are mindful of yours. There are ways to accomplish this. I'm, I, I'm convinced that. I believe that as, as, as a governor, it isn't the state's responsibility. As a mayor, I'm very, very clear on this. It is at the local level where these decisions are made. But it's no different if a local government trumps on, on people's property rights or the state government. It's still, it's still ruining progress. We need to find a balance. As governor, I will work with both sides because I do believe there's an answer that will balance the rights of those who have invested and want to create economic development here in Pinal County and other places of rural Arizona and those who have invested here and, and deserve the right to know that their water supply, which is the most precious, and their rights will be balanced. It can be done. The technology is there. It's a matter of money. We need to invest and have those people who will be responsible invest the funds and assure us that it will be done in a safe, mindful manner. If that's the case, then we all win. Next to the people of Arizona, I think water is our most precious resource. The last numbers show that as a state, we use about 7 million acre feet of water a year. That's about the same amount we used in 1958. We peaked in about 1980 with about 10.3 million acre feet of water being used in the state. So in 1958, when we had probably one and a quarter million people, we were using the same amount of water that we're using today with over six and a half million people. That tells us a lot of things, but one of the things it tells us is that every drop is precious if we have spread the same amount of water over six and a half million people as when we had one and a quarter. Which means that even as much of a supporter as I am for economic development, we have to make sure that that development occurs in a way that does not jeopardize our most precious, our second most precious resource for the people that are neighbors to wherever that economic development is occurring. So I will dig in, as many have said, uh, to look at those details, and I think the burden is on the, the company to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, whatever the legal thresholds uh, could or should be, and I think it should be a very high one, they have to prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, they are not going to endanger the property rights, the assets, the water of those around them. And until they can do that, they should not be allowed to proceed. I think it's time for a governor from rural Arizona. And I'm the one that, uh, born in the south part of the state and grew up most of my life in Prescott. The challenges we face, that you face here in rural Arizona, are different than the major metropolitan areas. And it's important for a governor to have that perspective. 